Hello, thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're talking all about technique and things that we can be on the lookout for. Today we have nine common mistakes that beginning piano students often make that we can keep an eye out for and I have some suggestions for how you can be checking yourself on these. Now, technique is something that I don't like to micromanage too much in the very beginning just because if you've ever practiced yoga, you've noticed that in the beginning some of the postures are often quite strange, but after a month and after six months and a year into your practice, you start to notice that you that the positions come more naturally and that you can go further in the positions and and so on. And it's quite similar when we're playing the piano that in the beginning, of course, we want to be paying attention, but it's also not like we should sit down and say, okay, I'm only going to work on technique until I have that mastered, and then I'll start learning pieces, and then I'll start learning this and learning that. It's something that we learn all together, and it's something that's just going to keep improving as you go along, as long as you are paying attention to it. This is just a gradual process. It's something that it works that way for everyone, and please just keep that in mind as you watch these tips. The first common technique issue that I see a lot is that everything comes from the fingers. That when we're playing, we're really lifting the fingers a lot and we're not using the rest of our arm in order to play. But that's just a really common misconception about playing the piano. It's not, we don't play with our fingers. The fingers are what land on the key, but it really comes from the whole arm. It's, it involves the wrist, the forearm, the upper arm, the shoulder, the back plays together so that when we activate the fingers they're ready but they're also supported by the rest of the arm. Problem number two that I see a lot is that some people tend to start playing with their wrists quite low and it's it's not especially among younger children they'll even kind of rest their hand on the edge of the piano and this just really puts a, a much larger burden on the fingers. It's, <laughs> you can try playing like this, it's quite difficult. Of course, this is extremely exaggerated, but this is also much too low. We want to try that the, that the wrist is more or less at the level of the keys as we're playing. And of course, the wrist, needs, the wrist will need flexibility, we'll be moving it quite a lot but we don't want it to be just kind of stuck here underneath the keys. Common mistake number three is the opposite of that, that the wrist is sometimes too high. That This happens a lot, especially when someone sits quite high. I personally sit quite low. Um, this is lower than most pianists would probably choose to sit, but for me it's comfortable. But um, when people sit quite high, which is something that one can do, but it then it often leads to the, the, the hand comes from too high, that the wrist is held quite high, and then it's very comfortable for the fingers to play in that position, but then we often have just kind of an, a superficial sound, we don't really get a lot of our weight into the keys like we want to, and that's also problematic. The fourth common mistake is this idea that I don't know where it started and the intention behind it is good, but we should really, really, really be careful when, some, when we hear someone say that we play piano with curved fingers. It, there are times when we do want a rounded shape in the fingers, but when, when we start to talk about curving our fingers or pretending that there's a bubble underneath our hand or an apple or a ball, um, it automatically, or almost automatically, leads to a kind of claw <laughs> that, that people play with. And then that's just a lot of tension in the hand. And of course the opposite can also happen, that fingers, are, that we play with two flat fingers. And so I think that's where the attention comes from, is that we don't want to be playing with our hand like a piece of paper either, but this idea of curved fingers is dangerous. So what, what you can try to keep in mind is the most natural position for the hand is if you just let it hang and you can see there is a light curve here but it's also it's just a really natural position for the hand. If you curve the fingers it, the hand just has a lot more tension and then it's we can't even move the fingers as quickly. Flat 
somehow goes a bit better than curved but it just be really careful and try to think about this natural hand position you you can hold your your arm like this just to kind of see how your fingers look from this position you can also if you're standing and have your hand to the side that's also a very natural position for the fingers and that's what we want to try to be striving for when we're playing quite similarly another thing that happens a lot when we're playing is we have too much tension of course we have to have some sort of tension in our hands and in our arms or else we would just fall off the keys if we wouldn't be able to stay and play anything but um there's a lot that we have to think about when we're playing especially well always there's a lot to think about when we're playing piano but in the very beginning it's a lot of unusual things that we're not used to paying attention to and then what happens is when we're thinking our entire body starts to tighten up and so the neck maybe gets tight the sh what i often have a problem with is that my shoulders get tight and then you'll notice if you've practiced for an hour or two that when you finish your back is just oh, can't handle it anymore but also back to the curved finger problem that the the fingers can become quite stiff and and we want to just always be on the lookout that we have the amount of tension that we need to play the note and to stay on the key, but then that we also have a certain amount of flexibility. Problem number six. Um, I would even, I was maybe also doing it a little bit. When we sit on the bench, it's really comfortable to sit here nice in the middle and we're nice and relaxed and we can just play. When we play piano, we actually want the weight from our upper body to go into the keys. And if we're here, nice and relaxed at the back, then our weight is actually shifting a bit backwards. And um, an interesting metaphor that I've heard before is when an American football player is, um, oh boy, Football is not my thing. But the guy who hikes the ball to the quarterback, when, when they stand kind of in this triangle position that they have both feet on the ground and then the hand on the ball, that's the type of center of gravity that we want to have when we're playing piano. We want to be leaning towards the keys so that the weight from our upper body is being transferred into the keys. And that's when we can get a really nice but also it removes a lot of the work from our fingers and, and brings the power from our upper body. So to summarize, not in the middle of the bench where it perhaps seems nice and comfortable, but much rather on the front third or so is where you should be sitting so that the weight from your upper body is slightly forward. Problem number seven, sitting too close. It, some people, um, I don't know if we're really used to being at the desk on the computer, but a lot of people will be quite close to the piano. And again, it's, it's I don't know, I find it uncomfortable actually. I don't find it, <laughs> but maybe I'm just not used to sitting like this. Um, but we want to have some space between ourselves and the piano so that, again, that there's room for this transfer of weight, but also that when we start using the pedal, that there's room for our legs in between and that we're not crammed up underneath there. Common mistake number eight is ignoring posture. It can be really comfortable, if, especially if it's early morning, late in the evening, to maybe sit with crossed legs, to just kind of hunch over the piano. We don't get too attached to that. I'm, I mean, I've also been guilty of maybe being a little too at ease <laughs> when I'm practicing. But we want to try and focus on having sitting nice and tall, with a nice tall back, shoulders away from the ears, and and just maintaining a really nice almost elegant posture when we're at the piano. It just, it again, supports this idea that we're transferring the weight and um, it removes a lot of tension from the rest of the body if we're practicing good posture. 
And last but not least, mistake number nine that nobody wants to hear about because almost nobody enjoys this step is not practicing scales and chords from the very beginning or at least very early on in your learning process. Not many people enjoy practicing scales not or the chords that go along with them. It's also kind of this disconnect between when we're first starting out it's hard to see the point why we would want to be practicing these scales because we don't have scales in our pieces. It's quite the, the music tends to be quite simple and remains more or less in one position. We're also not playing chords in this phase yet necessarily. But scales and chords are the foundation for really good technique later on. And there are lots of pieces that involve playing scales and that involve lots of different chords. And so if you start practicing those things from the very beginning, or at least, like I said, early on in your learning process, you're going to adapt much more quickly when those things start showing up in your music and when you start needing more flexibility in your hands and more freedom of motion as you move your way around the piano. That's not even to mention the, the harmonic knowledge that we get from our scales and chords because the, if we really understand all of our scales and all of our chords, then we also have a better look into how the pieces are built, how they're structured, where the, where the notes come from. Um, but just on a strictly technical level, it's also important to be practicing them. So that you're able to be practicing your scales and your chords, I have a printout with all of the major and minor scales and their fingerings that you can there's a link down below in the description make sure that you check that out and then you'll have a nice head start later on when you need to start applying those things to your playing if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any new upcoming videos and in the comments below let me know have you made any of these mistakes or is there anything that I missed in the list that you worry about in your playing? Let me know and I'm interested to see what you have to say on that front. Until next time, happy practicing.